Hello and welcome to the first devlog for my new game. I want to try and make some small games for a while, so this one's going to be a lot simpler than my last. To me it seems like making small games will be a better way to learn. So for this project I started with a really simple idea. I wanted an endless runner type game where you control a car that'll just keep getting faster over time. Through the devlog you'll see that I deviated from that original idea a little bit, but the main components stayed the same. So let's get into what I've done so far. I threw together a quick prototype to start getting a feel for how the game would turn out, and at first it was just a cube that slid around on a plane, but I already knew that I wanted the road to be built during runtime as the player makes it further, so I put together some basic road pieces and made a spawn manager that sticks them together. To make sure the road segments connect correctly, I created these connection nodes, where each segment has a start node and an end node. So each time one of the new segments is spawned, I just have to match the position of its start node with the end node of the previous segment. I also had to keep track of the angle that the previous segment ends in to place the new segment in the correct orientation, and I want to make sure the track doesn't turn back and go backwards on itself at all. I used the checkpoints on each of the road segments as a trigger that increases the speed of the car, so every checkpoint increases it a little bit, and they'll end up playing a role in the scoring system later too. In just the first day of working on this project, I was able to put together this fully playable prototype, and it's actually pretty fun. It was really exciting to see with just these basic parts, it was already starting to feel like a game. My original idea was for the player to just try and get as far as possible, so I wanted the car to be really controllable, and in the original prototype, it was actually really drifty, and I thought I wanted to get rid of that at first. I started looking into wheel colliders to try and get different behavior. I changed the dimensions of the car a little bit and added in the wheel colliders to start experimenting with, but I really didn't like how it was turning out, not to mention I was having a hard time with the wheel colliders. I spent a while messing around with the parameters on the wheel colliders, but it wasn't really getting much better, and I was starting to see that the drifting made the game even more fun, so I decided I was going to switch back to what I originally had. And that's about when I realized that it's always a good idea to have a second scene in your project that's specifically meant for testing new ideas, because now I had to go back and fix all the things that I changed. I still want to try and learn more about wheel colliders, so I might experiment with them in a future project, but I just don't think they were the right solution for this game. Since I had to remake some of the stuff in the original design, I decided I was going to try and fix some of the issues I had with it too. I tried a couple different collider setups for the car like using a capsule collider for each axle, which really didn't help all that much. In the end I settled on just having a sphere collider that touches the ground to keep the car on the ground, and a box collider around the body of the car that handles the rest of the collisions. I still seem to be having some physics issues, like every once in a while when you hit a checkpoint the car bounces off the road, which is really visible if you look at the shadow or up in the transform component you can tell that the Y value is changing. My best guess why this is happening is that the road segments have a plane that's overlapping with each other, so each time you go from one segment to the other, that overlapping causes some problems with the physics. So hopefully when I make the final models for the road segments, it'll fix this problem. This is the point where my idea for the game really started to evolve. I decided I wanted to put some more emphasis on drifting. So for now, I just made it so each checkpoint gives you 10 points, but I think in the future I'm going to reduce that amount, and instead each time you pass a checkpoint it increases a score multiplier, and the rest of your score is going to come from drifting around the corners. I think I already have a pretty good idea on how to implement the drifting score too. It involves using dot products, so if you're curious how I'm going to do that, let me know and I can include it in the next devlog. I decided before I started adding in all the drifting features, I wanted to model a car first. I basically used the modeling equivalent of tracing a picture to make it. I took a blueprint image of a car and lined it up on each axis as a reference. Infinzia has a video about how to do this, and it really helped me. He makes a lot of speed modeling videos too that can be really useful if you want to learn more about modeling. I also added in some color for the model so I didn't have to look at the ugly gray texture that it defaults to. Eventually I might add in some other color choices for the car in the game. And I'm also thinking of modeling some different cars, but it took me so long to model this one that I might wait until I finish most of the main features of the game first. I also later realized that I forgot to add the side mirrors to the car, 
so I went back and did that. But they're so small you hardly see them in the game anyways. I'm going to post the game that I have so far on itch.io with restricted access, so I'll leave a link in the description with a password if you want to try it out. That's all I have for this devlog, so if you haven't already, hit the like button, make sure you're subscribed, and thanks for watching.